Welcome to Goober Town Hobbies. My name is Brent. Today we are talking about the chemistry of superglue. What's in this bottle and what does it do? Stick around to the end and I'll also show you how superglue accelerator and superglue debonder work. Superglue is quick setting and versatile. It works on most surfaces and is strong enough for many craft and household applications. It sticks our fingers together and it fogs up the inside of our craft box, but we love it anyway. So, what is superglue? Many of us have heard it called CA or cyanoacrylate before. If we check out material safety data sheets for our favorite brands, we can see that the primary ingredient in all of them is a chemical called ethyl cyanoacrylate. Well, manufacturers tend to be a bit vague in the percentages that they print in SDS sheets. That's for trade secret reasons, but the trend is clear. Superglue is mainly ethyl cyanoacrylate. Other ingredients listed are thickeners, such as polymethyl methacrylate, and inhibitors, such as hydroquinone. Hydroquinone just prevents the glue from hardening inside the bottle under a process called free radical polymerization. Let's talk about that main ingredient. This is ethyl cyanoacrylate. Ethyl cyanoacrylate. Ethyl cyanoacrylate is a liquid at room temperature, so superglue doesn't require any solvents, hence why some brands are almost 100% ethyl cyanoacrylate. Like water, cyanoacrylate can evaporate and recondense. Some forensic specialists actually use this feature of cyanoacrylates to preserve and visualize fingerprints. Here, a drop of superglue is misting onto my thumbprint. The oils from my hand speed up the polymerization, the hardening, of the superglue. The ethyl cyanoacrylate has become polyethyl cyanoacrylate, and my thumbprint is preserved. The chemistry of superglue at work is the story of liquid monomers reacting to form chains of polymer. As a liquid, superglue seeps into all the cracks of the surfaces being glued. As it polymerizes, the intertwined chains of polymer become solid, sticking the bits together. The backbone of the polymer chain is formed by the carbon atoms involved in this carbon-carbon double bond. During polymerization, this double bond becomes a single bond, and each of those carbon atoms form a new single bond with a carbon atom from a neighboring ethyl cyanoacrylate molecule. The net result of this transformation from monomer to polymer chain is analogous to that for many common polymers, such as when ethylene becomes polyethylene, or when vinyl chloride becomes polyvinyl chloride, or when styrene becomes polystyrene. Really understanding the polymerization reaction helps us to understand how moisture in the air causes superglue to harden, how superglue accelerant does its job, and how oils from our hands cause it to harden so quickly. We're going into hardcore chemistry mode for the next minute or two. Buckle up! Molecular drawings like this only tell part of the story. Although this is an electrically neutral molecule, electrons are not distributed evenly about the molecule, so there are actually patches of positive charge and areas of negative charge. In cyanoacrylate, the oxygen and nitrogen atoms pull electron density from nearby atoms towards themselves. Importantly, this puts a partial positive charge on the carbon atoms. Partial positive charge on this carbon atom is particularly important for the reaction that is about to happen. This electron distribution can be explained using the theory of resonance as well, but that's a whole other can of worms. If you're curious though, here are the most relevant resonance structures. Okay, we've heard that water vapor causes superglue to harden. Water is composed primarily of H2O, with traces of H3O+, hydronium, and OH-, hydroxide. Hydroxide is very reactive towards ethyl cyanoacrylate. H2O itself may also react with cyanoacrylate, but we're just going to talk about the hydroxide for now to keep things simple. Well, relatively simple. In chemistry, opposites attract. That negatively charged oxygen atom of hydroxide is reactive towards sites of positive charge. When a hydroxide ion bumps into an ethyl cyanoacrylate molecule, one of the pairs of electrons from the oxygen atom may move to form a new covalent bond with this carbon atom. Somewhere, you've heard that a covalent bond is simply a pair of electrons shared between two atoms. As this new bond is made between oxygen and carbon, 
one of the two bonds between the two carbon atoms is broken. This is because carbon never makes more than four bonds. The two electrons from that carbon-carbon bond relocate to the second carbon atom. These arrows that I've drawn are a standard way to represent the movement of two electrons during a chemical reaction. Again, we're seeing an oxygen-carbon bond being formed, while simultaneously one of the two carbon-carbon bonds is being broken, and the two electrons from that bond are moving to reside on that second carbon atom. A chemical product with a pair of electrons localized on carbon is generally unstable and unlikely to form, but these nearby electron withdrawing groups that I mentioned earlier, along with these resonance structures, help to explain why this intermediate ion with a negative charge drawn on a carbon atom is stable enough to be formed as the product of this reaction. Although we draw a full negative charge on the carbon atom, in reality that charge is more distributed over the rest of the ion. This was the first step in a nucleophilic chain polymerization reaction. This type of reaction mechanism is characterized by the movement of pairs of electrons from electron-rich reactants to electron-poor reactants. The hydroxide ion was electron-rich and known as a nucleophile. The carbon atom was electron-poor and called an electrophile. Identifying nucleophiles and electrophiles can help us understand many chemical reactions. These opposites often tracked form new bonds. Anyway, after that first reaction which made a new carbon-oxygen bond, the second carbon atom, which was left with a negative charge, may now act as a nucleophile itself and bond with an adjacent cyanoacrylate molecule. The movement of electrons in the next step of the reaction is familiar. A new carbon-carbon bond is made, a carbon-carbon double bond becomes a carbon-carbon single bond, and a new carbon atom becomes negatively charged. This chain reaction can continue until all available ethyl cyanoacrylate monomer is used up and we are left with a polymer. Let's watch some glue polymerize with all this in mind. Moisture from the air is exposed to the superglue. Unseen to us, polymer chains begin to form. For now, the shape of the droplet is determined by surface tension. Small and medium polymer chains are soluble in the liquid monomer. As the monomer is consumed, the polymer chains get longer and become entangled, and a solid begins to emerge. Hardening this big drop took about an hour. Humidity was low. Superglue accelerators can drastically speed this process along. Let's go check out some BSI accelerator in action. Here we have some liquid glue slowly becoming gummy. Give it a squirt of Instaset, and suddenly the glue is cured. So how does this work? Looking at the SDS sheets, we can see that accelerators have a lot of ingredients. The main ingredients are actually solvents, and the active ingredient is only a few percent. This molecule is a weak base and a weak nucleophile, which can initiate the polymerization of ethyl cyanoacrylate. Superglue hardening can be accelerated with baking soda as well. Like hydroxide and dimethylbenzylamine, the bicarbonate ion can act as a nucleophile and initiate the polymerization of cyanoacrylate. Superglue baking soda combinations are popular for filling gaps in models and adding texture, or adding snow effects in dioramas. The moisture and the various nitrogen compounds on our hands also accelerate superglue hardening, which is why our fingers get stuck together so quickly. So what should we do when we accidentally superglue things together? Somewhere in popular culture is the idea that nail polish remover will dissolve superglue. I ran a quick test with a bunch of household chemicals to see what would dissolve chunks of superglue. In this time lapse, I have lined up pure acetone, nail polish remover, simple green, super clean, LA's totally awesome, ethanol, and isopropyl alcohol. Acetone worked right away, and nail polish remover, which contains a lot of acetone, also worked. The other cleaners weren't very effective. As a side note, acetone is not breaking down the polymer, it is just dissolving or partially dissolving it. Those carbon-carbon bonds in the polymer backbone are not easily broken. Of course, since filming this little test, I was reminded that products are sold specifically for debonding superglue. This is BSI Uncure. 
and it works. These T-bonders are typically composed of dimethylformamide, also known as DMF. This is just another common organic solvent which is capable of solvating chains of polyethyl cyanoacrylate. Okay, let's give this D-bonder a real test. It works! Well, that about does it for this episode. I'm purposely presenting the science in this series at a higher level than most people are probably looking for. I figure that there are lots of places where folks can go to get a fluffier answer to questions like this, so I decided to stake out a little niche on the more definitive and scientific side of things. My intent is to use this series as motivation for me to research and really understand all the bottles of chemicals that we have on our hobby desks. As a disclaimer, I am an organic chemist, but I've never been involved in designing or manufacturing any of these products. I'm just a little better equipped to look this information up than most people are. If anyone does notice a mistake in my understanding, please let me know because I'd really like to correct it. Other than that, please let me know what topics you'd like for me to tackle next. Well there we go. It is my earnest hope that you learned more than you really wanted to today. If you did enjoy this topic, please do me a favor, like, subscribe, comment, and come back again soon. Okay, that does it for this time. Thanks for tuning in.